Thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning, and thank you for choosing to shine a light on the labor needs of agriculture and your tireless work to provide much-needed solutions. There are certain facts that I don't believe anyone should question. The first fact is that working in the fields is obviously physically demanding labor. There's insufficiency as far as the availability of a legal labor force. Those taking these jobs are not displacing those here legally, since regardless of pay and other benefits, they just don't want to do this kind of work, and understandably. The majority of those falsely documented, or here illegally, however you want to phrase it, pay their state and federal income taxes, as well as contribute to Social Security without any hope of ever collecting. They're law-abiding and proud to grow food for this nation and other nations alike. We've come very close to passing immigration reform in agriculture several times. Senate Bill 744 in 2013, and most recently in 2018. We have been unsuccessful because we've been divided in our goals and in our needs. Only by pledging allegiance to the collective needs of agriculture can we dissuade others from seizing upon these internal divisions and proffering legislation that does not meet the needs of the whole. What we ask is based upon the economic future needs of our industry and is in no part political. Some of our pressing needs would include a legal status for our long-standing, reliable, existing workforce and their families without the need for a touchback. An H-2A remake that is not an administrative nightmare that does not price our producers out of business. The ability to fill all of our jobs without the burden of a cap. Since these workers are not taking work away from those legally eligible to work, there's no displacement and there's no economic model that would justify hiring, justify hiring more workers than are needed. And lastly, establish E-Verify for agriculture only after the law is implemented and operable so that we have adequate enforcement. Now, to succeed in resolving decades-long effort to correct the mistakes of the past and the present, we need a bipartisan bill that would have a reasonable chance of being signed by the President. It will take statesmen and women of the highest order to find a pathway to compromise. It will take the same reasonableness on the production side, knowing we must be willing to accept less than an optimal resolution and try to understand the political dynamics which make difficult changes to our immigration system in any form. We are prepared to work with all due diligence needed to reach these objectives. There's no path to immigration reform unless this solution is bipartisan. Approaching this difficult task with a heart at peace and not a heart at war.